In this clip, I answer a question about how to use external volume storage with Docker Swarm. Yeah, uh, and a lot of these questions you're getting answered, but I'm gonna answer them anyway. <laughs> so thanks so much for the help in the chat. Uh, Andy asks, do you have any advice on mounting the same persistent volume using Rexray across multiple containers in a Swarm stack when the when the PD can only be attached to one node at a time. Um, yeah, so you cannot, uh, what, see, here's the thing about uh, container orchestration, Andy, is that containers don't change any of the fundamental underlying storage infrastructure features or limitations. So what I mean by that is if you're using Elastic Block Storage in AWS, which can only talk to one container, uh, one server at a time, right? You can only connect EBS to a single EC2 node at a time. That's a feature or a limitation of that storage device, that storage system. Containers don't change that. And I don't know that they, they ever would, right? Uh, certainly they don't today. And they, you know, all the tools out there will just assist you in getting that EBS object onto the right node for the right container at the right time. Now on, on AWS, if you use something like uh, Alexander mentions NFS, that's essentially what is backing the EFS tool with uh, AWS's EFS storage. And that is slower, but a type of storage that is designed for multi-node, multi-read and write. It's essentially like a Windows file share if you're from a Windows background, a SMB, SIFS file share and Windows world has that same functionality where multiple in nodes or clients can connect to the storage shared over the network. Um, iSCSI, for example, does allow it, but it tends to not allow multiple writes at the same time, only reads in certain technologies, depending on whether you're using advanced storage like NetApp, stuff like that. So when you think about storage, you basically uh, realize have to realize that, remember, that containers don't change any of the, the limitations of storage, really. So you have to go find the right storage, and in fact, when people ask me about storage in general, we uh, a lot of people tend to, tend to gravitate to uh, storage, like I need the container storage th tool first. To me, that's the last thing you should do. First, you took you look at the application, you look at its requirements, you know, I'm running my SQL, I have to have a certain response rate, a certain level of IO, hopefully you can find out some of these things, and then you have to go then looking for the storage itself that will fulfill that need, and then last thing is, how do I get that storage working in a orchestrator or Docker itself if you're not using orchestration, like just a Docker run? And then, so that's how, you know, because most storage vendors now are all providing Docker drivers, Kubernetes drivers, stuff like that. So I don't tend to go looking for that first. I tend to answer the questions, what's the app need? Let me go find the right storage solution. Once I find that storage solution, how do I get it connected to my cluster? Uh, maybe you did it that way, and maybe you're just already at the point of saying, hey, how do I do multiple uh, read writes to it? And unfortunately, you're going to have to find specific storage that supports that. Now, we can get into that whole you know, storage replication, right, where you're replicating files across different servers called shared nothing storage, or where uh, you have storage that's sitting on one node that's shared across the network, maybe using NFS to others or you're using cloud storage or your own private storage in a data center, those are all different types of storage solutions that you would work out before you decide what needs to be in your orchestration, right? Because again, those, all those things aren't necessarily container specific, they're just standard storage solutions and they've ex most of them have existed bef before containers. And then you just need to get the right driver or plugin for your container orchestrator or Docker run. So hopefully that process will help you work out what you need to to find to solve your problem. Thanks for watching. You can click subscribe and the notification bell to get an alert when I go live so you can join and ask your DevOps and Docker questions. You can watch some of my other videos over there and you can do what I'm about to do and just go take a nap. <laughs>